Today we're talking about what happened down in Davenport, Iowa. Now, can you kind of tell us exactly why you guys went down there and what kind of happened while you were down there? Absolutely. On June 1st, Thursday, June 1st, at approximately 3.26 in the afternoon, uh, the Iowa Department of Homeland Security notified our task force that they needed some assistance with a building collapse that occurred in Davenport, Iowa. Uh, within three hours, we were able to deploy Davenport that evening. We arrived Friday there, Friday morning around 3, 2, 2 a.m. We had a quick briefing with our counterparts, our other half of our team in Cedar Rapids, another task force member, task force that in Cedar Rapids and the two teams meet together. At 6.30 that morning, uh, we arrived on scene on site. Uh, we went with a, a briefing of our objectives. Our objectives was to find and locate three members, that, no members that were in the building and they're believed to be in the rubble of the apartment collapse area. Uh, we worked 12 hour shifts, we would go from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Then the other half of our team would relieve us for the night operation. So it was a continuous 24 hour operations as we continue there. Uh, we arrived there, um, continue our operation. We were able to locate all our objectives and find all three, we covered the three members or three people that were in the collapse zone and be able to, then we did, once that was complete, and to ensure no one else was in the basement area that we were tasked with. Once that was completed, our objectives were completely done, and we came back today after being demobilized. How much stabilization, Joe, did you have to do? Because city officials kept saying, you know, how unsafe it was there. So, did you have to? Did you have to do some things to stabilize areas before you could search them? Um, our other team from uh, Cedar Rapids, they were there the day before us. So they stabilized this showing on the building itself. We also had structural engineers monitoring the movement of the building, making sure our safety above us. Because we were working at, obviously there's a collapse, uh, and everything kind of went in, pancaked into the basement area. So we had hazards above us that we had to mitigate. We have heavy duty equipment there to assist us to make sure uh, everything, obviously we were safe as possible that we can be wearing our proper PPE and respirators. So it's important that we have the heavy equipment was able to remove some of the debris above us to make it safer for us to go in those areas where we, and there are engineers who are constantly monitoring the building for any movement shifting on those areas. Now, can you sort of paint me a picture of like the first day that you guys arrived there? What did it look like? What was going through your heads? And overall, just what was kind of rushing through, what was just rushing through you guys' heads during it all? I believe it was okay, having a plan, operational plan, what was our objectives is. Uh, we met with the incident command system there and understand with the, the other half of our team, our task force leaders from both sides, that both divisions were there and we communicate back and forth to make sure what our plan was in importance. Understanding where possibly with the search dogs hit on the rubble pile, uh, get, kind of gives an idea of what to look for. Then the biggest thing is with all the rubble and stuff, so you had to make sure everybody else was safe around us to make sure uh, we have safety officers on board that are watching, continuously monitoring our team and also the teams in the evening. Uh, another thing that we had an issue with is the weather. You know, we're in temperature of 95 degree weather plus, and at nighttime, you, you don't have the light that you normally do during the daytime. So making sure our members were hydration, our work cycles were kept in place. Uh, we have systems in place. If the evacuation of our members had to get out, we would have a way for them to get out as quickly as possible. Um, it was just a whole rebel. Obviously, most of you seen the pictures from the media in the past. You see that the back of the building collapse on those areas. And it was a lot of understanding and we wanted to make sure we bring some closure to the families to make sure we find those those victims in the in the rubble pile. You just talked about the families there. My question I wanted to ask you is, you know, you, you go down there and this is obviously just a catastrophic situation. It's hard to remove emotion from it. You have a job to do, but obviously you're you, you're working but you're thinking, you know, about these families and the people that may be trapped or, you know, there's so much uncertainty in the air. Can you kind of talk about the emotions you had and, and the way your crew kind of felt as they approached the situation? Approximately, you know, we wanted to make sure everybody was safe. You know, we don't want to have uh, create more injuries in, in those areas. So the emotion was there. We want to bring those closures to those families and find the, any victims in those robopol. And we knew that we had three known people in it, but we wanted to ensure that no one else was in the building. You know, we all live in an apartment complex sometimes in our lives and sometimes visitors come with us or family comes over. We just want to make sure everybody was completely out of the basement. 
to all the rubble piles that we left before we left. So there's a lot of emotions, you know, we want to provide that recovery and griefing process for the families so that, hey, at least they know that we, they were located and recovered for them to have that, that period of grief for them. Was that, was that unusual for, you, for your unit to be dispatched so many days after an incident or would, uh, would normally you would want to get called maybe a little quicker than that happened because it was what a good five six days later uh, yeah, approximately i'm not sure we, normally our cedar rapids team the other half of the division was already out there uh, normally a request has to be sent from the emergency management to the state then the, before we get deployed uh, and work on those, those resources from the management team on that standpoint from the county management team from their scott county emergency contact to the state and the then state then make that request um how did the scene that you all had to work in Davenport compare to maybe other collapses you all have had to work normally this is a bigger structure that we've been into so it's a lot more detail um a lot more rubble because we talk about six floors that collapse into the and plus the basement that's in there so there's a lot more rubble uh, a lot of steel that was meant in those areas so there's a lot of perimeters and being able to maintain that safety of our crews and maintain of everybody in that situation so it was obviously we had to wear everything what we normally wear, plus our respirators and everything that goes with it, and be able to mitigate some of the dust from the concrete dust and, and everything else that's in there in the gas and all that was shut off prior to our arrival. Yeah. How often does this group train? I mean, obviously we're at the training center today. Correct. But but uh, you're with such a specialized group. Do you? Do you do this every couple of months, training-wise, or, or because th this is something that not everyone's trained to do? That's correct. We we're all specialized. The other team in um, Cedar Rapids, we do the same thing. Uh, normally, we do specialized training for our structural collapse. We go to Texas, uh, where they train us. So all members who are on structural collapse are part of that. You know, we go out through the phases. You also have medical specialists. You also have canines on our team. We have a structural engineer. Uh, we also go into swift water rescues and dive rescues also as part of the team that's available from this, as a state resource for the state. Um, so there's a lot of training. Um, we constantly train at least once a month. Uh, every team has a far specialty that we train you know, monthly to deal with those issues. It brought both teams together and we worked fluidly like it was seamless. Like you couldn't tell the difference between the both of us, both divisions. How? Yeah. How, how meaningful was it to be able to bring at least some kind of closure to those families? It was very meaningful for us. We met our objectives, we completed it, and it was, you know, we met our tasks, and it was a kind of a relief for us. Our biggest thing is our crew members, we're all humans. Mm -hmm. We want those, those family members to have that closure for them. So it's very, very important for us as a team when we came together. And just to, we know that we got them out, and now they're able to move on for their group. Different process with the families.